anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Wednesday, December 8, 2021, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, health officials with a watch and see approach to tightening protocols, the rationale for postponing public school examinations, the Christmas carnival still without approval, and our men's national basketball team looking to rebound. So let's start the morning off right. Don Davis. I'm Desmond. You're looking Christmassy this morning. I'm feeling the Christmas spirit, trying to brush it off. Uh, to yeah, you. hopefully I can. Bit. Hopefully I can get on get those it, colors yeah. later on in the week. I'm but sure it's... you have red and, and green and gold and. I'm gonna spice blues. it up. I'm sure you have. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely yeah. gonna spice it up. Yeah. We've got a great show. Uh -huh. um, I'm ready to go to a carnival, but mm -hmm. same. There's there's a back and forth between. Uh -huh. Some of the officials uh -huh. of the carnival and government officials, but I'm ready to go to the carnival and go on some of those rides. I don't know about you. I want to go on the rides. I want to eat I pizza. I want to go on the scissors. So I want to eat some pizza. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. What? I want to play, play some games, uh -huh. do some fun stuff, you know, lighten it up. I don't know. That, are you, you think that you think it's gonna happen Friday? I, I don't know. Hoping. Uh, I know Bahamans I, are hoping. A like I said, uh, there's been, been a back and forth. Yeah. Uh, uh, as it relates to approval, but we'll wait and see and see what happens. But uh, UB is going to be joining us. We have some officials from the University of the Bahamas talking mm -hmm. about the impact of COVID on education. Mm -hmm. So it should be an interesting, interesting interview. interview. Yes, yes. COVID has impacted all of us. Mm -hmm. And I know you have the trivia. Yeah, question. we've got a trivia. This is nice ornament supplied by Janae's. They've got some great ornaments, some great Christmas items. So if you get an opportunity, you want to go down there. But we've got the trivia this morning. And this is an easy one. I know. <laughs> How do you say Merry Christmas in Spanish? LaDonna, I'm not going to ask you because you're going to give out the answer. Yeah, because I gave it out earlier. So, yeah, I won't, <laughs> I won't say what it is, but you can give out the number so the person's good. 502 3855, and we should get some a lot of calls this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you're lucky, Janae's going to hook you up this morning. What we're going to do? Color. I love yeah, the color, it's nice. Yeah. Pretty, 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 pretty yeah. nice. Pretty nice. What we're going to do is head on the streets, and we've got two superstars on the broadcast uh -huh. this morning <laughs> international superstar Lloyd Allen, and of course, Corporal Patrick Kemp, mm -hmm. always a superstar joining uh -huh. us on our broadcast. Guys, what's happening with traffic? Well, Desmond, you're definitely 100% correct. There is a superstar out here, and it's not me today. It's Corporal Patrick Kemp. Uh, he's giving us a look at traffic overnight, over the last 24 hours. <laughs> Officer Kemp, what are things looking like? <laughs> good morning, good morning, Mr. Lloyd, and good morning, Bahamas. And also special good morning to Mr. Sanders. Uh, it's a beautiful day, Lloyd. Uh, traffic is already built up on the streets, as you can tell, and it's moving at a moderate pace. Uh, we still have a number of accidents that are taking place on the street uh, that could be avoided. And we've discovered that a lot of it has to do a lot with stress, Mr. Lloyd. Persons are highly stressed that are driving on the streets. They focus on their bills, relationship, uh, health issues, uh, problems with their children. And so they're not 100% focused on the street. And I want to encourage those drivers out there who are feeling highly stressed, please pull to the side of the street. Uh, take a moment, um, call a, a special friend, a loved one, someone that you trust uh, that can give you some good, sound advice. Even pray about it. Prayer changes things, Mr. Lloyd. And uh, you'll be surprised that a two or three minute break can refocus you and to continue on your journey uh, without uh, getting in any accidents. Well, hopefully one of those things that should be de-stressing us uh, should be a visit to the carnival. As Desmond said this morning, of course, uh, he's looking forward to get out there. Off the camp, I'm sure uh, you're going to get some time off and visit the carnival as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I, in fact, I passed it there a couple of nights ago, and I see that they are erecting those those uh, rides, and I can't wait. And I just want to say there are poisons, especially in those areas. Please park your vehicles uh, in an area where it is safe and secure and, and sort of your valuables on your vehicle and to avoid getting broken into during this time. 
So uh, you heard it first, of course, and Ladon, we haven't forgotten about you. Now, I know they don't have the carnival in Harbor Island, but of course, you'll be enjoying for all those folks down there. Reporting here from the corner of, where are we today again? St. Vincent Road and Bloyal Road, of course, uh, for the morning edition. Desmond and Ladon, back to you guys in studio. Thanks so much, Lloyd. It's back to have you back in the morning. Staying on the outside, a weakening surface trough across the northwest Bahamas will continue to support a few showers and thunderstorms as it migrates eastwards. Meanwhile, high pressure will dominate the weather over the remainder of the islands. There is a slight risk for a few water spouts across the northwest Bahamas for the northwest and central Bahamas. Weather shaping up to be pretty good, partly sunny, warm today with a few isolated showers and thunderstorms possible. Mild tonight with a stray shower or two possible. For the advisory, expect gusty winds and high seas and showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south, 10 to 15 knots, but falling light and variable at times. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. For the southeast, sunny, warm, a bit breezy. Chance of a few isolated showers, fair and warm tonight. Winds east to southeast, 15 knots. Seas 3 to 5 feet over the ocean. High temperature today, getting up to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 39 degrees Celsius. And here's a look at your extended forecast. COVID-19 infections is giving health officials some leeway as they weigh the need to enhance travel protocols at the nation's borders. The Omicron COVID-19 variant is rapidly spreading across the globe, now in at least 48 countries, according to the World Health Organization. But Minister of Health and Wellness, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, says there are no plans to tighten restrictions just yet. The statistics are proving that the viral load is low. But while that is happening, we must be mindful of what's going on around the world. We know Everyone knows that the new uh, mutated variant is there, and it's not a matter of when it will come, uh, how it will come to the country, it's a matter of when. And every country is faced with the same challenges, but every country must be able to have the economy prime and started. A health committee still left to make the final decision on the Christmas carnival, according to the health minister, who says, as far as he knows, nothing has been set in stone. His comments came on the heels of a carnival spokesman publicly confirming that Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, had granted permission to open this Friday. Darrell, who insists he's not contradicting the claim, says the committee must be satisfied that the carnival can meet COVID-19 safety requirements, and that committee is set to meet today. Six new Providence residents and one from Eleuther make up the seven new COVID cases on record, just one of them showing a history of travel within the past 14 days. Meantime, of the 15 people nursing COVID in hospital, just two of them are on the intensive care unit. This while there were no recoveries added to the count. The decision to put off public school end-of-term examinations this semester is to allow education officials a chance to better assess students' performance in the new year. This according to State Minister for Education, the Honorable Zane Lightborn, who added that a low but fluctuating attendance in virtual classes ranging from 45 to 50 percent was among the determining factors. The delivery of education was not ideal and therefore we cannot assess our students properly. So there is a level of assessment because you know, we have... Um, term or in class grading that teachers would do throughout the course of, of the year and so the Ministry of Education took into account met with stakeholders all of these uh, situations that would have affected a normal classroom setting and the ability to test and therefore the decision was made to delay this exam um, for, until we, we can do a proper assessment in that kind of contact. No decision made as to whether or not the nearly 4,000 people who unlawfully received unemployment benefits will be asked to reimburse the National Insurance Board. Minister responsible for NIB, the Honorable Miles Hirota, says officials made the discovery several weeks ago. I'll give an example here. There were some issues with Atlantis um, employees who have been terminated. Um, the act would require that for you to benefit or collect unemployment benefits, you would have had to make um, contributions for the 52 weeks previous. Well, we have individuals who was off for over a year. And even when those redundancies were paid, um, if you're a line staff, that would only um, be in the amount of 26 weeks. So those individuals were not working. When they did get their severance, 
only 26 weeks worth of or 24 weeks worth of contributions were made so they left at a deficit so that's going to be a policy decision um, that the government will have to make and the government is considering highway tolls to offset the cost of road repairs. Works Minister the Honorable Alfred Sears says it could be one way to remedy the constant need for upgrades to roads across this country. We have these various forms of infrastructure that must be maintained. And as is done in other parts of the world, certain infrastructure could be subject to a toll. So that is being examined. No determination has been made on that question of tolling any of our highways. It's just a discussion at this point. Two new government boards announced on Tuesday. The bridge authority will be chaired by Basil Longley, while Barrington Carter takes the reins as chairman of the Strong Market Authority. We will be moving at a very fast pace. Uh, most things I do, I, I, I always... Uh, um, uh, use the term, you know, moving at the speed of light, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I find that, you know, when that approach is taken, um, then you have the opportunity to exceed expectations. I have an awesome task ahead of us. However, I know that with the commitment, the mutual respect, a willingness to learn, that the ability to invite in innovated ideas, we can turn our straw market again into a world-class operation. University of the Bahamas. We're joined live in studio by Dr. Maria Oriaki, Vice President of Academic Affairs, and Dr. Susanna Gal, Dean of Pure and Applied Sciences. Ladies, welcome to the morning edition. Thank you so much, Ladon. It's good to be here today. Dr. Oriaki, let's start with you. We're still in a COVID environment. How has it been this past semester? This past semester has been a wonderful semester for the University of the Bahamas. We have been adopting four strategies of learning modalities, mainly the UB face-to-face, -face, the UB real-time, the UB flex model, and the UB online model. As you know, to get into this COVID environment, it has mean an adjustment for our faculty and our staff. And so we've adopted those four models so that we can incorporate all learning styles and all learning at the University of the Bahamas. And you're in exams currently and heading to a new semester come January. What can we all expect? Certainly, Ladon. This semester right now, we are currently in an examination period. And in the spring semester, we will continue mainly in the virtual modality. But there are going to be more classes in the face-to-face -face environment. And of course, classes will remain online. And they're going to be in the UB Flex and the UB Real-Time model. Now, Dr. Gal, you're the Dean of Pure and Applied Sciences. Sounds like a lot of hard work. Tell us a little bit more about what can, what can we expect and, and what the department actually entails? Thank you. Um, it involves working with faculty, students, and staff to really support the students in their learning um, in all areas of sciences. It includes nursing, architecture, chemistry, biology, math, um, and some engineering fields. And so it's very exciting. I've been here about six, five months and learned a lot and looking forward to learning more. Thank you. And are you happy with the number of students currently enrolled in the department? 
Um, we are plenty, plenty of students in many of the departments who are looking for more to uh, work on in the areas of engineering. So if that's of interest to you, um, please let us know. And have you seen a decline in interest uh, since COVID-19? Um, not, not from my perspective, so, but thank you for asking. And what does the future actually look like over there at the University of Bahamas? We have a whole lot of very exciting things going on. Uh, we're looking to develop some new programming, uh, potentially pharmacy um, at a graduate level, um, and some other kinds of things, chemistry degrees and, and things like that. So thank you. Dr. Oriaki, Dr. Gal, good luck with everything, and thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition. All the best to you and the University of Bahamas team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, LaDon, for having us here this morning. It's been our pleasure. Thank you, ladies. Minister of Housing and Transport, the Honorable Jo Beth Kobe Davis, noting that the affordable housing program in Westridge, initially announced by the previous government for young professionals, will likely not receive the green light. This as efforts are ongoing to locate ready properties in other areas throughout the country to get persons into affordable housing with flexible terms. Yeah, putting more of our attention and focus into properties and areas throughout New Providence that is actually ready for us to start putting houses on the property that'll get people in their homes faster. So that's what's really our bigger focus, but we are preparing to send a paper to Cabinet so they can provide us with a final conclusion of where the way forward with that. As the Minas government has sought to offer the Westridge properties at $50,000 for multi-family units and single-family units at $40,000, Kobe Davis says the current administration seeks to create a program close to a rent-to-own scenario in addition to affordable mortgages. The biggest holdup, however, remains on penciling the terms related to insurance. We think we have a good grasp on how we'll structure it out, but the only question that's um, lingering on is something to do with insurance and how we'll insure the homes, even though it's not specifically into a mortgage. So we're looking at ways to make sure we deal with that properly as well. Excitement is brewing in Eleuthero over the recent announcement of that $200 million Cotton Bay expansion and development project. Revised head as the heads of agreement was signed early this week by the Prime Minister and resort officials. The new development will see the property branded by Marriott International Rich Carlton Reserve brand with a construction of 60 villas and 90 rooms. Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, the Honorable Chester Cooper says the project will have a significant impact on the economy of Eleuthera. We have seen a significant level of interest in investments in the Bahamas since coming to office. And therefore, this is an important occasion uh, for us to demonstrate our commitment uh, to the tourism product, first of all, and to the investment sector generally. The Ritz Carlton brand uh, will be an important uh, development for tourism in our country and we are delighted uh, that Cotton Bay Holdings is taking this important step in moving this uh, development along. How many residents including that island's member of parliament already expressed expressing optimism over the project that will employ some 500 Bahamians. The project is expected to be completed within 48 months. Local manager for Cotton Bay Holdings Limited is Daniel Zulita. This will make a huge impact on the island, especially on the south. Uh, it will create opportunities for young people, especially uh, to grow and develop on the island without the need to live in their hometown. Well, that's, that's the major thing. We, we have been working with the community for several years, and we, try, we will try to continue that, that be that way. Family Island residents, no strangers to thoroughfares that mirror less of roads and more of a rocky path. But on the island of Exuma, they're quite literally seeing that change before their eyes. Antony Smith has this update on Exuma's road improvement project. Roadways on Exuma are not quite what they used to be. 
you don't have to be ducking puddles. That minor inconvenience alleviated due in part to ongoing roadworks on the mainland, where improvements undertaken by Bahamas Striping Group of Companies, subsidiary Caribbean Pavement Solutions, are quickly nearing completion. We would say we are about 90% complete in the initial contract, and that takes us almost uh, from the airport corridor uh, through Tar Bay, um, uh, past the Hermitage, Hoopers Bay. Which, when finalized, will make for a total of 10 miles of newly paved road. And while the infrastructural improvement project is not yet complete, it's already apparently lending to a spin-off in economic activity. Um, our guests coming to Sandals, we encourage them to go out and about. We encourage them to rent cars, to see the island, to see the different um, areas of interest. And so it's important that they feel safe and, 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 and safety as far as the roads are concerned. The roadway transformation also evoking calls from local businessmen like Teddy Clark, who hopes to see a similar change of pace for the rest of the family island. Baratari is now opening up because it's a, it's a haven for... Uh, a lot of touristic activities. The road there is is really, really needed. A sentiment echoed by Managing Director Dr. Alan Albury as the project, which once seemed like a long road ahead, is nearing the end. As most persons know, uh, Exuma is burgeoning, and this is this is this island is uh, undergoing a complete renaissance. Um, and we believe that infrastructure plays a vital role uh, in the economic development. As we head to the break, we take a look back at Today in Bahamian History. On December 8, 2004, Kersner International broke ground for its Phase 3 expansion. Also on December 8, 2005, the Bahamas Nurses Union agreed to a five-year contract with the Public Hospitals Authority, bringing to an end two days of sick outs by nurses. National basketball team is coming off a pair of losses to Canada, the latest window World Cup qualifiers in the Dominican Republic. Head coach Moses Johnson gave this summary of the team's performance. We knew going in Canada, ranked number 19 in the world and number two in the Americas, we knew that there would be a challenge. Um, they had about six G League players and six Euro League players. So they knew they were coming in for a fight and they did not take us lightly and they prepared. Uh, to do so, having an eight-day training camp in Houston prior to coming to the tournament, and us having going there and, and having to prepare in three days, uh, you know, and build chemistry. Uh, most of the guys would have played with each other, you know, but getting that first scrimmage in or that first game in really gives you a an essence of of where you are and what you need to work on. And so we, we, we were pleased with the effort put out by the guys. And now they know uh, what we need to do to, to get better, moving into the second window with the uh, Dominican Republic and with uh, USVI. And despite the losses to Canada, Johnson says his team remains optimistic. We're looking forward to, to qualifying. Uh, this is just one window, so it's not disqualification. It's only one window of three, 
as we look to press ahead, as we get better and better um, during the windows to come and qualifying uh, in the end of it all. So we're just pleased um, it didn't go the way we wanted it to, uh, being 0-2. Uh, but uh, hats off to Canada. Those guys really shot the ball well, whether, it's for, whether it was contested or, or it wasn't. Um, they, they really shot the ball well. Everything is changing, and your favorite hardware and home improvement store is getting with the program. We Buy You Sell is rolling out its new online shopping feature. If you go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, it's a quick and easy three-step process. Step one, browse the gallery and select your item. Step two, add to cart. And step three, check out. Go to our website, wbusbahamas.com, to shop with us today. Christmas approaches, the aim of many is to put smiles on the faces of children. But as we hear this morning, that role has reversed as the little ones of Caring Hands Academy are putting smiles on the faces of the elderly. Here's Romiko Knowles. We thank you for our families and ask you to bless and watch over us. Thanksgiving has come and gone, but the giving continues. The little ones of Caring Hands Academy showing their appreciation to the Red Cross Society of Grand Bahama by donating food items. Principal Stacy Beckel says this is the first donation the school has ever made, and they are grateful to do it in a tangible way. As a school, we want to instill in our students that they are never too small to show acts of kindness and generosity to others. So on behalf of the staff, students, and parents of Caring Hands Academy, we would like to give this contribution to, our organi to your organization as our way of giving back and saying, Thank you for all that you do for this community. The students not only came with food items, but also with cheerful hearts, singing songs of praise. Caden Cooper, Brooklyn Allens, and Isaac Knowles share how they feel about the opportunity to give back. I'm happy about it because we're helping our elders. Happy. And now that these youngsters have given, it's time for them to receive. What do you want for Christmas? I want a guitar. I told my daddy I want a toy horse. A toy horse? A toy dump truck, because I love toys. Okay. <laughs> Administrator Stephanie Barr thanking the students for their donation. I am just overwhelmed by your coming to us, your singing, your prayers, and it will go a long way. Your donation will go a long way in our feeding program that we have here. We have our elderly and shut-in that we do daily on our Meals on Wheels, and we have our monthly that we will package your canned goods and rice and stuff for them. And so it will cheer them up, you know, this uh, Christmas season. Now, in addition to the donation, the little ones say they would like to wish all a Merry Christmas and a Ah, so nice with those kids, right? Well, the iconic scent Nick may be synonymous with giving away toys all over the world, but on the island of Exuma, two corporate citizens are known for something much bigger, a holiday drive that involves a warm meal and lots of Christmas cheer. Is Antoine Smith. It's quite the ambitious goal. When Bahama Striping, um, you know, suggested um, the initiative, um, how could anyone say no? But one for which the execs at the Bahama Striping Group of Companies and Sandals Emerald Bay are willing to roll up their sleeves. For the second year in a row, the companies will join forces for the holidays in feeding the 500. Uh, I think this initiative is, is one that, that demonstrates uh, 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 I would say willingness to, to, to partner with the community and, and make sure that, that no one goes uh, 
are we on for on Christmas Day? Bahamas striping has been a mainstay on the island of Exuma for the past year. Their efforts coming at a time when the effects of the pandemic can still be felt near and far. This year's outreach, though, a very personal one for the team members at Sandals, who throughout last year's resort closure experienced some hardships of their own. But um, it was very humbling um, for me as general manager to, um, to just ask once, and I only had to ask once who would like to come in and volunteer um, and it wasn't just the chefs I mean hats off to, to the culinary team um, but it was team members from across the board who just wanted to either plate up serve. During the wee hours of Christmas morning the hard work is set to begin with cooks laboring throughout the night and volunteers from each community hand delivering meals throughout the day an act of kindness bigger than themselves and bigger than just a holiday. We don't just uh, provide the uh, the meals but we come we fly in on Christmas morning um, we stand and we help to serve the meals and uh, the joy and the expression the, the responses the thanks uh, the gratitude that we see on the people faces I mean that to me is the greatest Christmas gift of all well, love the gratitude, LaDon, and uh, so amazing. Well, I had an opportunity to go down to Fidelity Bank, Frederick Street, and Jerron Butler and I captured these images and what they're doing at Fidelity Bank, all of the employees getting together and decorating and all that great stuff. Uh, shows camaraderie and mm -hmm. teamwork. So that's, that's uh, pretty interesting stuff. Double everybody, everybody had a theme. <laughs> Every department uh -huh. had a theme, uh -huh. got together. And combined, that was awesome for was Christmas. Awesome. Yeah. That was fun for you in Toronto. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Really fun. Yeah. Well, right. we've got the answer for the trivia. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you say Merry Christmas in Spanish? Feliz Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve a million dollar prize, right? <laughs> now, we, we, uh, who's the winner this morning? Cornisha Roll. Okay, she's, she's going to be lucky um, for this to get yes. these nice ornaments yes. from Janae. So, uh, mm -hmm. great show again. Great and I job. want to send out a special congratulations to Luther native Keenan Johnson, attorney there. He's now the new chairman of top, the town planning committee. I don't know if you know of Keenan. Keenan, yeah, great quite, guy. I'm quite a remarkable young man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, and be good. sure to stay tuned into the ZNS network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. And that's it for us, Desmond. That's it. Feliz Navidad. 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 <laughs> Have a great morning, everybody. <laughs>